Hey guys, it's Tim McCamus. We're out in the shop this evening uh, adding on to our uh, fabrication videos. So we've went over some of the tools we use and, and some of the different um, options that we have for fabricating. And we're going to get a lot more in detail, but um, I want to take this step before we get into any actual welding um, to show some fitting, some tube fitting, which we do a lot of. We fit a lot of tubes every day. So. Um, so I've got a, a, a variety of tubes I just pulled out of the short rack just to, to show you some, some techniques. And I've got a couple tools out that I showed you earlier, which one is just this uh, quarter inch die grinder with the inch and a half drum roll on it. And then I've got this uh, little four and a half inch electric grinder here. Now we're kind of doing this, uh, we have a lot of other tools here to work with, but we're trying to show you how to do this with the stuff that you might have at home or stuff that you can get fairly inexpensive you can pick it up at a hardware store or you don't have to buy the real high dollar uh, notchers and stuff so you want to use some stuff that you would be uh, familiar with again we're gonna um, go over some fits and, and on these chassis there's tons of different angles there's different joints there's all kinds of degrees of fits and some of them very few of them are straight and square most of them have a little angle to them some of them might be fit in a corner some might be intersecting other tubes, some, some might be smaller diameter, and they might be intersecting a larger diameter tube. And those also might be, if they're in the floor area, let's say, they might be moved up to the top side of the tube so that the uh, top plane is level for the floor. So you've got a smaller tube intersecting a bigger tube, but not on center, it might be up towards the top. So you've got some weird fits and angles going on. And if you're gonna TIG weld this thing, um, you need a tight fit. I mean, you need, you need the best fit that you can get. You can have a little gap and you can weld it. The problem is, is when you, when you bridge that gap, um, you're gonna get some, uh, some distortion, you're gonna get some pull, you know, that, that weld is, is hot and it's gonna shrink when it cools. So when you have a nice tight fit, your chances of that tube pulling and loading are um, drastically reduced over having a gap. So I'm not going to tell you we never have any gaps on tubes because we do. I mean, if you're fitting a lot of these tubes, sometimes you just have a little gap that you got to fill. If it's too big and you've really got to work at it to fill it, number one, you're going to get it too hot and it's going to be a bitch. It's going to look like shit when you do it because it's not easy to fill that gap and make it look nice. So big project when you're starting on these things. Um, the worst thing you could do is start on the chassis and have a bunch of crappy fits where your welding is going to look bad and the whole project then starts from the foundation going downhill from there because it's a long, you know, these projects take a long time to put together and the, the chassis is the very basic starting point. So if you got a bunch of crappy fits, then it's just going to make the whole project look bad and later on when you go to powder coat it, you're going to be like, I wish I would have just refit that tube. So. This tubing is expensive, but it's not that expensive where you can't just say, okay, this one's scrap, I need to do another one. But just some of the basics, like this This is gonna be, I just pulled this out of the rack, but this has got a corner fit on it. So this would be fit where like two tubes are intersecting. Um, so let's say this tube intersects this tube, and this is gonna be a corner fit. And sometimes you'll see guys cheat this up and make just a straight cut fit because it's easier um, we like to corner fit it just because it helps gusset that area and make that, that joint stronger. So instead of just cutting one straight fit here and fitting it up off that corner, we'll tuck it into the corner like this and then weld it around that joint so it kind of gussets that corner and makes that area a lot stronger. This is uh, one example of a, of a corner fit. This end here is going to be like a straight fit on the side of a tube. So I want to show you a couple different methods. And, Guys get really confused on tubing fitting, but it's very easy and it's very basic. So um, you need to have a, a, we use these silver Sharpie markers to give you a good line to work off of so that as you're fitting a tube up to another tube, you can hold it beside it and, and give yourself a good angle mark that you're going to start with. Now, like I said, we've got some uh, Mittler Brothers Ultimate Notchers here, which are kind of spoil you. Um, but you don't, you don't need that, you, if you're, especially if you're doing this at home and building your own chassis and you're not going to be doing this every day. Um, I 
I'm gonna fit, I fit this with a chop saw cut. I'm just gonna eyeball this cut because I wanna show you how the, the basics of, of fitting with a chop saw. Now, I'm not gonna clamp this in the vise because we do this a lot and I'm gonna hold this by hand. So this is not safe, okay? So I'm gonna show you how this can be done, but I'm gonna tell you not to do it this way. Um, I, wanna, I wanna cut a little bit of an angle on this tube so that I can show you how it fits onto another tube with a straight cut. So this tube is square on the end and um, I'm gonna fit it. I'm just gonna pick a number. I'm gonna, let's say a 45 fit to an, a, another tube. So I'm gonna cut this and then show you how it fits. But like I said, I'm not clamping this in the vise. I'm just gonna hold it and chop it off here, okay? So this is just a standard Dewall 14 inch abrasive chop saw. And you can pick these things up at, at Home Depot or Lowe's. I mean, they, they're, they're cheap and we use it quite a bit here at the shop. We've got a cold cut saw, but this is nice for just a quick fit on a tube. So I'm gonna cut this. Most every fit is a series of flat cuts. So like if you look at this, um, that is, that's a flat cut right there. And this is cut square on the end. So this tube was cut square on the end and I, I'm just gonna chop this corner off like this and I'm gonna make this a 45. So now I haven't done anything to this. This is right out of the chop saw. So it needs to be deburred a little bit, but just right out of the, of the saw, that thing is weldable just like that and that's just to, that's a that's a straight cut tube with the corner chopped off of it and if i take this hand grinder and tune this up and knock this burr out of the inside and just round these corners ever so slightly this is a totally weldable fit that would be perfect um, to move on with and it's quick it took me 15 seconds to chop this corner off and it's done so if you look at it like that, no matter what you're doing, even, even this fit here, which is kind of complicated for this corner, if you look at it, it's just two straight cuts. It's, it's a straight cut and a straight cut. But if, and if you look at it this way, it looks complicated. It looks coped out and it looks tapered in, which it is because we've used a drum sander on it to tune it up a little bit. But in reality, it's just a straight cut. So I could take this over to the, I could take this here with a square end, put it in this corner like this and mark this. Let's say, let's say this is just my angle here. I'm just going to mark parallel with this tube here. So I'm going to go to the center, just off center, and I'm going to mark parallel with this tube, parallel with that tube. Okay, so I'm running this line and this line. And I'm going to take this over there, chop this, and it's going to fit in that corner pretty damn close. Now, it might need a little bit of deburring and a little hand tuning, but for the most part, it's gonna be close right off the bat. So this is where guys get screwed up because this is these tubes are not hard to fit, but they're, they're hard to measure because you're going round tube against round tube. So to get the numbers accurate, you've gotta do a little more thinking, but um, as far as the fitment, almost every fit, I, Easily, we could build one of these cars here without the notchers that we have and fit it with a 14-inch chop saw and a hand grinder. That's how we used to do it 25 years ago, I mean, when, before we had any of the fancier tools. And, and they fit good. And once you get the knack of fitting that way and you start looking at these tubes, you'll see that every fit is just a series of either one or two straight cuts and a little bit of hand massaging which would be either, so if I'm fitting to a inch and a half tube, I could take this in here and I could just, I could just zip this, okay, just like this. Now I'm not gonna do it, but I could take this and it's gonna come in here, it's gonna knock this burr off and it's gonna take this fit and, and roll that, that edge over and then I could round this off and actually I'll do it real quick so you can show you what it looks like.
Okay, now this is that same tube that I showed you. It's got the one straight cut, and I've just laid that, that drum roll in there. And if you remember looking at it before, how it had, didn't quite fit, but look at it now. It's, it's perfectly weldable. I mean, that's, a, that's an excellent fit. So, and it fits that way on both sides. So if I turn this around, I mean, you're going to see both sides look the same. And you can easily weld that and it won't pull. So, <clears throat> like I said, guys that, are, that, that get, they get caught up in all this angles and joints and what you've got to have to fit it. And, and yeah, I can take this over there and throw it in that, uh, that ultimate notcher and, and not go through any of this trouble. But if you don't have a $3,500 notcher, you can use this chop saw and drum sander and fit this perfectly. I mean, it, it's now I can use this also too. This, like I would do the same thing. I would just go in here like this and cup this out and roll this around and just use this. Um, actually, I think I showed you in the other video that uh, the a new disc on here is square on the edge. You've actually got to take it on a piece of metal and round it out. And you can see this one, how it's laid over. Well, if I had this available, I would use it. If all I had was this, I could do the same job here and just tune this thing up and it'll look just like this. And it's two or three minutes to fit this. So I know it sounds easy, but we, because we do this every day and it's not, it's not going to be as easy for you when you don't do it all the time. But if you don't overthink it, if you just remember what I'm saying and say, I can do this with a straight cut. You'll be amazed at how good you can be fitting with a chop saw. It just is a quick way to chop the edge off. And when you hold that tube up there, you'll be like, damn, that fits really good. And all it needs is a little tweaking with a, with a drum sander or, or a grinder to kind of finish it out, get rid of that burr. Um, another thing you need to remember too, is you always want to have a vent hole. So, um, we put all of our vent holes underneath of the tube. So you, when, you, when you weld these tubes on the end um, and they're closed up, so like let's say this end is gonna be welded and that end's gonna be welded. If you don't have a vent hole in there, it's gonna blow out. It's gonna, that, when you come around and start to wrap that weld up, that puddle is gonna blow out because the inside of that tube is gonna be pressurized and it's gonna push that out, make a shitty spot on your tungsten and ruin the end of the weld. So we, we use an eighth inch bit, you know, battery drill, air drill, whatever you got. And just mark the tube here, just take a marker and mark around where it's gonna go and just pop that hole in there. And so all of these chassis, like this chassis here is completely vented. So they're all vented. So if you looked at this tube here, there's a vent hole in there, there's a vent hole here and here. And that's so that these other tubes can breathe out into that and not blow out. Every tube's gotta have a vent hole. If you come around the end of a weld and it explodes at the end, it's because you don't have a vent hole in there. This is just some basics and really this is all you need. If you have a, a 14 inch chop saw, a little hand grinder and one of these die grinders with some of these uh, drum rolls on it, you can fit these tubes and be every bit as nice as what we do every day. Now, we can do it a little faster because of the equipment we have, but when you're doing this at home, this is all you need. You don't need to spend a bunch of money on equipment, but this will do the same job. And you just really have to get it in your head that I can do this with straight cuts. And once you understand that, it'll, it'll be like a light bulb will pop on and be like, all right, I got this now. You'll be able to blow through these tubes and fit this stuff all easily. And it'll have a nice tight fit like that. And you're, we're going to show you a little later in some of the videos on some welding techniques. So once you get comfortable with that, you'll be able to lay a nice weld on that fit. You won't have a gap. Um, it's not going to pull or distort out of shape. And when you're done, you'll be like, wow, that's really nice. And, and I got exactly what I wanted and I did it all myself. So, so again, this is just a little tube fitting basics and um, it doesn't really get much more complicated. I mean, you have to, you have to measure your tube placement and get that in the spot that you want it. But once you know that and you mark your fit, you roll on and you'll have that chassis knocked out in no time.